I want to give you another kind of KPI to think about. I call it cal. Think about it like calories. Like if you have lower calorie, that's normally better, I guess, whatever in this situation. But it basically is COGS or cost of goods sold plus ads. And if I can have the sum or the addition of my cost of goods sold plus my advertising budget below a certain percentage of my total sales, that's a good thing. And if it's too high, then it puts a lot of pressure on my business where Amazon fees eat me up or any refunds eat me up. And so give you guys a quick example of this. Um, my benchmark for an elite product, I'm trying to, by the way, you're, you, you and me are meeting right now. We're having a cup of coffee. You're trying to design the perfect elite product that can scale. I would love to have your cow be at 40% or less. And so let me give an example to kind of like make the math not, not mystified. The average Amazon seller across our entire business that we support here at Seller Accountant has about a third, about 33% of their budget in a in cost of goods sold. Now, obviously, resellers will be a little bit higher. Some brands will have more premium margins, but the average is about a third. And so if I want my cow to be 40% and I already have 33 points in my product, then I only have a 7% budget, right? 33 plus 7 gives me 40. That's what I can afford to spend on my advertising. And this is really, really important, Todd, because the most common question, you, you probably get it too, but the question I get at every single conference I speak at is, Tyler, what can you really afford to spend on advertising? And the answer is it depends on how much margin you have in the product. If I have a really sexy, high margin product, maybe it's only 20% of my sales or the cost of goods sold, I can afford to spend a lot more on advertising. I can, I can buy that real estate on Amazon. I can compete for more keywords. Whereas if I have m lower margins, let's say I'm only 30, 35 or maybe 40% of my, of my total profit and losses just in that product cost of goods sold, oh boy, my advertising needs to be incredibly lean and mean, or I've got a product that isn't going to be very scalable. And so for me, 40% Cal is elite. If you look, if you were to pull up your profit and loss and be like, oh yeah, my cost to get sold plus my advertising is less than 40, know that you have an elite product. That's a scalable product. You can afford to even borrow money to scale that product. If it touches all the way to 50%, I'm starting to feel some pressure because that means I have a lot of my total budget tied up in those two categories, my cost of goods sold plus those advertising expenses. And that may tell you, you either need to raise your price or it might be time to design products that have better margins. Interesting. Okay. So if, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, then for the COGS ad load, if I have a product and my cost of goods sold for that is 30%, um, so I would have... 10% of that cost that I could spend on ads uh, to be still under that 40% that we're aiming for. Yeah, and it's not like, not, don't take this as hard, fast science, but I think it's kind of an anecdotal thing. Yes, like basically, that's the point I'm trying to help you guys think through is if I have 30% of my cost of goods sold, I have a certain level of ads. Whereas if I have 40% cost of goods sold, ooh, I've got a lot less ads I can afford to um, yeah. to invest in. That's right. Yeah, I, I think that's really helpful, the, especially the 33% the COGS is really cool to know that in your experience, you know, if you're doing good, you've got a 33% cost of goods sold or less right. than um, for what you're selling the product for. And having a 40% or less for your COGS ad load, I think that's that's important. I like knowing that that's kind of the elite and then 50%. You start getting more, you're kind yeah. of in the danger zone. You better be looking at that product and figuring out how to decrease your costs somehow. And, and by the way, the most typical example is that kind of right in the middle. Like I would say, again, if I had an aggregate study in front of me here for, you know, 200 million of Amazon sales, maybe that we support here at Seller Accountant, the average across the entire population would be something like 33% in my cost of goods sold and about 12% of total advertising or total ad load, which would give me that. Cal of 45%, which again is good, not elite, not terrible, right? And so I think the point is, is that as we, because, because you know this, Todd, as we launch new products, we're experimenting, we're trying to figure out, okay, after I get through my launch phase where I'm probably going to lose money for a month or two, how do I know as soon as possible, whether this is a winner or whether it's a loser? And so one of the metrics that you might be looking at really early on is this cost of goods sold plus advertising load to give you feedback from the market. The market loves this product and they're giving me enough margin for me to continue working with it or timeout, we might need to liquidate this inventory and start looking at investing in something else.